All right, start with the opening statement from Coach, and then questions for Musa. Yeah, glad to be joined today uh, by Musa, and uh, a lot of respect for this guy. Um, obviously, it was reported, you know, with him in terms of waiting on the NCAA decision, and um, just did a great job plugging along in times of uncertainty, controlling what he can control. Uh, he also misses some extended practices during that time, um, just for for from injury. Uh, nothing uh, too serious. He's obviously back now, so we're kind of. We're going through two challenges right now. One, getting him back after missed game time and then still trying to go through kind of the protocol. Um, and so I, that hasn't been reported kind of nationally, but I, one of my jobs, uh, you know, kind of tell the truth and stuff. So it's got in my right, um, you know, in a lot of ways we're building the program around Musa. Uh, one of the first recruits that stepped up and trusted our vision for the program before we had anything really to show. Um, always be appreciative of him trusting his talents here. Um, he's doing a great job academically. I think he's finishing up today his fall semester, so on track to graduate. And he's just overcome a lot of adversity. Um, the quicker we can get him back in the fold, it's a process. Uh, we talked a lot and a vision, certainly with each game, playing a more extended role. And then hopefully by the time we get to conference plays, back to being one of the best players in the country. Um, but I just want to make sure that the narrative was set you know, in terms of two challenges he's gone through, missed some ex missed an extended amount of practice uh, during that time. He's waiting on the NCAA decision as well. Any questions from my man Musa today? Was, uh, Chris said it was basically just you know hour for tip off against NC State that you figured out that you were cleared to play. Just kind of walk me through that feeling. I mean, it's a good, you know. I feel like now, like all the young players, like. That's the best thing that can happen to you, like being playing basketball and stuff. That's that's all I joy. So me waiting for so long and then find out that I, I was gonna play that that day. It was like a one of the best day in my life for her. I was it was it was a great feeling for her. What was the wait like? Just day after day, not knowing whether you would be eligible to play or when you'd be eligible to play. What was how did you sort of navigate that? It's really a trust. Like everybody around me was like giving me a confidence and make me feel comfortable. And then um. I know that all the coaches there was like fighting for me, so I put a faith in God and uh, just control what I can control and did something that you can't control. So I was just like waiting and uh, have like a patience. What's that first game like for you? And I guess maybe what boxes did you maybe check after the fact? Right, I'm not to this level yet. Maybe game shape wise, and I thought it might be. Man, it was the first game. I really wanted to go over there and then be like be myself and play hard as I can because I know I was like I was behind and uh, I'm, all I can do is just like give my all my best and try to try to get the win so it wasn't about me it was about the team so I went over there and just do what I can do so we can get the win. What's your familiarity with you know Chris like you know as a person as a coach you know y'all being in the Big 12 together for a period of time and then obviously going through the portal process? Yeah. I mean playing for Coach, Coach Beer is like a blessing for like the little amount of time that I've been here, like I can really, all I can be is just be grateful for, for, for him being my coach because like, like the discipline he, he made us do every day, and then uh, hard work. Like he preached like one thing about him, all you preach is hard work, and then the motivation he gave, and the confidence he gave with all the players, like that's, that ain't no, ain't no question why he's one of the best coaches in the country. So, me being, me being his one of his players is like really blessing for me, for him. Musa, do, do you feel up to speed in this system with what you're being asked to do right now, or do you feel like there's still some steps to take there as you try to work your way back from this? Um, for me personally, I'm not. I don't. I don't think so because I'm. I'm a defensive player. That's that's one of the best things. I'm. I'm always gonna be a good defensive player. So I know like an offense gonna catch up. Like I was, I was, I was ahead this summer on offensively, but like. Like not being able to play for a like short period of time, and I uh, I don't have my feels yet, my game feels yet. So I gotta go over there and just play defense and run the floor and do what I can do. Like and uh, so I don't feel like I'm behind. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get my feels back. So I'm not and no pressure. I'm just gonna go over there all every day until like I get my feels back and play defense, run the floor, like play hard as I can. Really. What was your prior familiarity like with Ole Miss? With you previously having played just an hour north of here. Yes, sir. What was your prior familiarity with Ole Miss before going through this process? You know, previously, you know, what period of time playing just in Memphis or north of here? Well, 
We play hard, really. But, so I don't really understand your question. What you saying? You said when you were living in Oxford or living in Memphis, mm. not too far from Oxford. Did you know anything about Ole Miss or Oxford? Oh, uh, probably not, cause I was I didn't have a car at that time, so I wasn't driving no. So. Chris has said, I think the night that you got cleared to tell us, maybe a few practices before, you kind of stepped up and called everybody in, or you've been a leader in certain ways. Just even though you were new to the team and hadn't up to that point been able to produce on the court, what is it about you that maybe felt comfortable enough to kind of become one of those? leaders and practices or just in a locker room? I mean, I feel like that's just me. Like, I don't, like, sometimes, like, guys, they get too comfortable. We, oh, it's not just, guy, even me, sometimes we get too comfortable because, like, we winning. That's not, we just got to stay the course. So, like, when I see guys, like, we, we getting off the track, I want to step up because, and it's not just me. We got a lot of leaders, like Matt, um, Jamie, and, like, all, all the older guys. We got, like, we got freshmen and sophomores that looking up to, we got, like, a seven, Seven um, veterans, so we gotta step up and then keep our, uh, our team on the track. So, for me, like when I see some something's going off the track, I gotta I gotta call everybody so we can we can have like a good practice or like be on the track really. With you and Brandon Murray kind of sharing, you know, the same circumstances, you know, for this this period of time, just almost kind of the dialogue like just between each other, just like, hey, let's get through this. I mean, Brandon is really like like. He's really stable in my like he really he he's the one really that was giving me confidence because I know he's in a good space right now. Like I'm not gonna speak about because I don't know like a lot about his case, but he's I feel like he's a good space. He trusts because he always t he used to tell me like look we we gonna get to this and he give me a confidence and then give me poise really. Do you have a question for Musa? Thanks, Musa.